Today, uh, the talk has several objectives. First of all, um, as everybody knows, I was away for a year and uh, I was in Japan, in Tokyo, doing research on my new project on the history of Japanese robotics. And I'm excited to tell everybody uh, what I was doing, what kind of research I was doing, and what are the interesting thing about this. Another objective of this talk is to show that some topics in history of technology and history of robotics in Japan is one of them, require us to pay attention to questions of cognition and affect that historians of technology, in my opinion, still not paying attention to enough. There are a lot of things that are special about Japanese robotics. First of all, there are a lot of them. Uh, the industry, the labs, research labs, uh, the commercial, uh, robotics research is booming in Japan and this is not something that we see in other places um, maybe except for uh, South Korea that is also really really interested in robotics. Specifically um, Japanese robotics are focused on humanoid features much more than labs in America do uh, and they investigate especially recently in the past 15 years in the human cognition um, in the space of interaction between robot, um, android robot, and a human. So the research that Japanese roboticists pursue is slightly different from the American ones. Focusing on aspects like eye movement uh, that seems to be human, like skin, the perception of the skin, uh, how people feel, whether they feel comfortable around the robot or don't feel comfortable about the robot. And their labs include psychologists, cognitive scientists, anthropologists, people that we wouldn't think that they belong in something that is in the realm of engineering. So that's what makes Japanese robots really special. Um, it is, a, I think it's quite interesting, uh, from my personal anecdotal experience, um, oftentimes when I mentioned that I've worked on Japanese robots, people in America immediately jump and say how creepy they are um, and something about the creepy Japanese robots. But people in Japan, their response is that robots are friends. Um, and there is a little bit of a tendency of saying that this love of robots is some kind of essential part of Japanese culture that is part of their religion, that this is just how the Japanese are. But in my research, I saw that it was not always like this. And in early 20th century, there were some elements in Japan that people were afraid of robots. Yet throughout the 20th century, there was gradual process in which people started seeing robots as more and more friendly, as heroes who are saving humans, who are helping humans. And throughout this process, this idea that robots are friends, that robots are family, was gradually constructed to the point that people in Japan now seeing robots, humanoid robots, as something that they would like to interact with. Um, there are so many surprising things about the sources. Um, it, it's pure joy working in them and reading the thoughts of roboticists or hearing them talking about the work. Uh, one of the things that particularly stand out in a lot of my experience was when I was talking to Mori Masahiro, uh, who is a famous Japanese roboticist and the one who proposed this idea of Uncanny, Uncanny Valley in the 1970s. And uh, he's still alive. He is uh, a, a little bit not well because he's 90 years old right now, but he is he's an amazing person. He's a real sweetheart. And uh, when I was talking to him and I was asking him about this competition, robotics competition that he created, um, that is called Robocon in Japanese, which is short of robotics contest. And, and his immediate answer was, Robocon is just like Zazen. And Zazen is a term for a sitting meditation that Buddhist monk um, in Zen monasteries are practicing. Uh, so for me, the two seem to be completely disconnected. How can you compare building robots with a sitting meditation in Zen temple? Uh, but um, there are in fact connections because uh, according to Mori, the kind of 
um, flow that you're the feeling of this creativity that you receive while you're building robots that you are so immersed in this project has similar effect as a sitting meditation that it frees your mind you're completely one with your work uh, so that was indeed something surprising and something that I really, really enjoyed investigating. I think that um, I'm currently really enjoying this research on Japanese robotics because it exposes a lot of assumptions that I had about how technology needs to create, needs to be created. Um, research on Japanese ro robotics also shows how different it is in different places and I think that maybe the message is that in general history of science and technology in East Asia or in anywhere that is not Northern America or Europe has a great potential for everybody to learn alternatives, learn in science about uh, development of science and technology and it's also extremely fun. <laughs>